find product links below and hundreds more videos on my channel. Hi everyone, welcome back. So uh, this video is going to be a comparison of the Sony NEX 6 and the A7 and if you want to see the rest of my videos about the A7 you can check out the links down below. I've got a big 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 review so it's had to be separated into separate um, videos. So comparison to the 5D Mark III and uh, video tests and image quality tests and all those sort of things. So it's all in separate videos because there's so much to go over. So let's get to it. These two cameras are two very very similar cameras and uh, at very different price points and with a lot of improvements on the A7 but uh, whether those improvements are really worth the price, uh, that's really up to you. So uh, we're looking at uh, less than half the price, I believe almost a third of the price for the Sony NEX6 compared to the NEX7 if you're considering the camera with the kit lens. And um, the kit lens is one of the main things that for me is more um, feels better in on the NEX6. It's wider, it's around 24 compared to 28 millimeters if we're comparing this to full frame width. So uh, this is 16 to 50, but it's around 24 on the wide end uh, if you were to compare it to this. So it's smaller and wider and at uh, a similar weight. Uh, I think it's a little a uh, little less, but it's, it's kind of hard to tell the difference uh, in your hand. I don't really feel a huge difference. I think this one is less than double the weight. Um, so yeah, kind of similar. And the if I can get this back on there, there we go. This one doesn't have a motor inside it, and I kind of prefer that, but the motor here, which is um, opens it up, as well as uh, controls the zoom and the focus, and here we just have a motor for the focus, so the focus is uh, electronic, the rest is, uh, the rest is manual. And so, uh, I, um, I kind of prefer the manual, but they're both fine. I do much prefer the compact size of uh, this lens, and I could, in theory, use this lens on there, or you know, some of Sony's other lenses that are for, you know, smaller sensor cameras, and still get the features that I want out of this, but have a smaller kit lens and wider when I want it. However, the problem is that here with this lens, we're only getting 10 megapixels approximately. Uh, because it, the sensor has to be cropped compared to uh, you know its original size, so it's only using the middle of the sensor, as well as that in video quality, it's completely unusable once used with a crop lens. It just crops the image and looks completely horrendous. And um, you'll see my uh, you'll see that down below in uh, the comparison. So um, that's why I would have to stick with this lens for this uh, A7, and this lens is fine, but. Uh, the good thing is that it does have very good image stabilization and that sort of makes up for the lack of width uh, because the wider an image is, the wider a lens is, the more stable it is. So because of the good image stabilization, it does make up for it a little bit. This one does also have image stabilization, which also does work uh, pretty well. And um, next up, build quality is very good on both cameras. Here we have a little bit of plastic at the front and the rest is metal. And uh, the, the buttons are a mix of, uh, I believe, no, they're all met, they're all uh, plastic, but the body is metal. And then here we have uh, plastic buttons, or I'm not really sure, maybe metal, but it has a, a plastic body, and uh, they both feel just fine. There's no issue with the plasticness of uh, both of these. And if you want metal, you can get this one. You can spend an extra. Uh, I believe 500 pounds or so, and get the A7R, which has a few other upgrades as well as uh, as well as the metal body. Here you can spend a little more on the NEX7 and get a few downgrades as well as a metal body. So uh, overall, even though the NEX7 has more megapixels than this, there's a lot of downsides to that, like no standard hot shoe and uh, overheating in video mode. So there are it's sort of a mix between the NEX6 and the 7, but for me the choice was the NEX6, even though it lacks uh, the audio inputs, but that's I'll keep that for the um, part about the video, the separate uh, video, that I'll compare these to in video mode. So the screens on both of these are very nice. The, I, I don't really have any complaints about the screens, they are both beautiful. When this came out, it was, um, you know, compared to most other cameras today, it's a very nice screen just looks nice and you know nice easy to focus on and um, it's telling me that the lens isn't attached properly so I'm gonna attach the lens properly there we go 
So, um, the screens are different though. So we have here, this is a better screen and this is a better viewfinder. So with regards to image quality and uh, sharpness and things like that and detail, you are getting more for your money on the NEX, uh, oh, sorry, on the A7. However, as you can see, the image size that both of those are displaying for the live view, that is uh, showing you a larger image on the A7, noticeably larger for still. So if I were to uh, go to um, an image that I just take, took a photo of, and I went to an image that I just took a photo of on the NEX6, so there is a big difference in the size that you're you're getting to view. So it is noticeably larger on the NEX, uh, sorry, on the A7. However, in video mode, it is very much wider because this is a 16 by 9 display that's being cropped down for video mode. And here we have a 3 by 2 display. I believe that's the aspect ratio. It's 3 by 2 display that's being cropped down for video mode. So it's the opposite. Then in video, it's the opposite. In video, we have a larger screen on the NEX6. Uh, or a larger viewing area of what you're actually shooting, and a smaller one on the A7. So, um, f you know, for someone who shoots both stills and video, it's sort of a downgrade and an upgrade. So, um, I'm not sure what's better, but generally for video, I would want the larger screen, because for video is where I really need to uh, look at the screen constantly for focus, whereas for stills, I'm some a lot of the time using more uh, a little more autofocus, specifically with these two cameras. With my 5D, I use manual focus lenses. But uh, mainly for video is where I would want that larger screen, especially when it's being used on, let's say, a camera stabilizer, so a, a thing that helps me stabilize the camera, and that's usually in front of my body, being held in front of my body with the camera there. And so being able to see a larger screen from further away is much more useful, whereas in stills, it's very easy to bring the camera close to you for uh, you know, looking at the image. So uh, that's that's a, a really big, uh, a pretty big plus point for the NEX6. Now with regards to the viewfinder, there is a nice noticeable difference between this one and this one. At the time this one came out, it was said to be the best on the market currently. Uh, so it was a very, very beautiful viewfinder. It's not even that old of a camera. I believe only maybe a, a little over a year old, maybe a year and a half, I think. But um, it, it's a very, very high quality viewfinder and it's also found on, on other uh, high quality cameras from Sony. However, this is a very nice upgrade. It is beautiful. It's gorgeous and sharp and looks fantastic. So both are very good. There is an improvement on the A7 and um, there is a little menu option within the A7's menu, which uh, allows you to tell the camera to use a higher quality in the viewfinder. And uh, so with regards to the comfort of using these cameras, both are very comfortable, very lightweight, especially for video shooting compared to most other cameras because you have that lovely viewfinder, you can bring it really up close to your body and it's just superb, absolutely superb and very, very comfortable to use. Uh, and that applies to both of these, you know, they're very stable. The image stabilization on the A7 is better. I've just, it's immediately noticeable, even though the NUX6 has pretty okay stabilization, it's better than nothing. And you know, it's fairly decent, but the A7 does win there. And, uh, and I think that's a big plus point. So uh, obviously that would depend on the lens that you're using. So that specifically talking about this lens, I haven't used any other uh, FE lenses, which are the full frame E-mount lenses from, uh, from uh, Sony. Another thing is when you are using lenses that are for, um, well, not for Sony, so just other lenses, let's say I would use my Samyang lenses or something like that, or anything adapted to these cameras, they are both extremely adaptable to almost any kind of lens uh, on the market. And when you use one of those lenses, because you have a larger sensor here, you have a wider image with any given lens, and that means that you will be more stable. A wider image means it's easier to keep stable, and uh, it just, well, it means that the any shakes are less noticeable in the image. So... Um, I think that's a big plus point too, the, the wider image with uh, with you know with any given lens that you might want to adapt to this. 
And another thing, of course, is that with the larger sensor, you are getting better image quality, but that will be down below uh, in, in a separate video in comparison. And the, uh, the image quality is better. You get better low light sensitivity here, although not as good as something like a 5D Mark III, but still decent. And from what I've seen, I haven't fully compared it yet. That will actually, I'll be happy to shoot that soon, that uh, test. But I've seen so far a much better dynamic range from here, at least noticeably better dynamic range. And um, the image um, from what I've seen online as well, with regards to image tests, uh, like scientific tests, like from DxOMark, um, I've, I've seen, you know, it's supposed to be a very, very good image uh, sensor with 14 stops of dynamic range at the low at the lowest ISO so that's really really lovely um, again uh, image quality test will be down below and that 14 stops of course does not apply to video mode um, but it applies to raw mode in stills so uh, shooting stills with this they're both very comfortable to use both uh, give okay image quality, but the A7 is just noticeably better. I feel it feels nicer to use. It has more controls, more fine controls, more options within the customizable menu. So here in the customizable menu, which is uh, selected through here, we only have uh, five options there, six, and here we have ten, uh, twelve, sorry. And uh, you can set a lot more options here. So for example, here I've set uh, this button to be to give me zebras and zebras are these lines for getting correct exposure uh, let me show you that just so you so it's like that it shows me when I'm at 100% exposure um, or, or another value that I choose so um, that's great and then I can uh, lift so I can control that through a uh, a shortcut and these are all customizable most of the buttons here are customizable and then when I lift this uh, little button up then I have this button do something else which is oops which is my peaking so that's the focus peaking for manual uh, focus does a, a nice job I've heard some people say that it wasn't perfect for them for me it hasn't had uh, any issues so far and feels you know very similar to the one on the NEX 6 uh, but I'll, I'll have to maybe do a, a full test about that uh, at some point but generally, you know, pretty good. Um, works and helps focus. And battery life is a big issue here, and I have not done a scientific test, such as taking the same two batteries and, you know, leaving them in the camera and seeing how the cameras do, but I notice a nice improvement on battery life on the A7. However, because that's not being tested, please don't take that for a fact. Uh, it's just sort of what I felt um, and noticed it just seems to last for a long time, whereas the NEX 6 really doesn't seem to last very long. Um, so that's that's just uh, an observation. We have a memory card slot on the A7 on the side, which is a little better than the uh, one here at the bottom of the uh, of the NEX 6, but in real use it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, this has never prevented me from getting my memory card out on most tripods and things like that. It's still perfectly reachable, sometimes a little awkward to reach, and, uh, and it is a little awkward to get your fingers in there, but you basically have to push that and then pull it like that. And, um, and it is still hot swappable, so you can still... Uh, I'm not sure if Sony recommend that you do it like that, but I've, I've never had any issues removing the memory card from the camera while the camera's on. So even though on Canon cameras, as soon as you do that, the camera will turn off, here it won't. As long as you don't remove the battery, the camera will stay on, and you can just swap cards without turning the camera off, which sometimes saves you a few seconds. Uh, on the A7, same thing, except it opens from here. Now the A7 is weather sealed, which I think is great. It just means that I have a camera that I can leave, you know, maybe it's on a strap. Uh, if I'm shooting stills, if this is my second camera, it can be on a strap. If it starts raining, I can, um, if my other camera isn't uh, uh, waterproof, then at least this one is. Now, it's obviously not for a swimming pool, but it's, you know, it's it's rain resistant. I've seen someone on, on YouTube stick this under a tap and it was still perfectly fine, but it's not really for dipping underwater. It's not for taking to your swimming pool. Um, it's just some protection from uh, from water and rain and, uh, and dust, of course, I think. And uh, so I think that's really great. And it just means that I have a camera that I can just shoot in the rain with, if needed, without worrying about the camera. And um, yeah, so uh, these cameras do come with caps for the um, hot shoes. I'm not sure if those caps are needed 
for the weather sealing. I don't believe the NEX6 is weather sealed. However, I actually forgot to check. I don't actually remember if it's weather sealed. I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it isn't. Now, uh, of course, the um, A7, just like my 5D, my 5D is weather sealed, but uh, my lenses for my 5D, which are uh, mostly Samyang lenses and, uh, and a Nikon lens, so those are not weather sealed, which is uh, why if I was shooting with this, with uh, this lens combo, then I do get something that is weather sealed, because the lens is weather sealed as well. So, um, the buttons and controls on both cameras work very well. And this camera within the menu feels a little more responsive in certain ways, but not really a big issue on the NEX6. Uh, one thing is I sometimes notice that it's a little bit slow to change modes in between the modes. As you can see, there's a little bit of a delay after I change the mode to when it actually gets to it. Whereas it is much faster on the A7. So if I switch modes, it is switching them much more quickly. And uh, over here this is a little something that I've only uh, set because it just makes it a little bit quicker to see what mode I've just changed to. But you can change this um, uh, m this sort of example, um, whatever it's called, sort of guide. Uh, you don't have to have that on um, unless you need it, you know, for explaining to you what the different modes do. But uh, this all this is in the in the menu options. Now, uh, again, with the menu options, the NEX 6 is less customizable, and I do feel uh, that I've been able to customize the A7 to something I like a lot more. And one thing that I did mention in part one was that there isn't uh, something that will let you use only the viewfinder for taking pictures and only the screen for viewing pictures which is a big annoyance, but I'm not going to go into that anymore. You can see the full details in part one if you really want to find out about that. And I do recommend you watch that because there is a big list of annoying things about this camera. I don't think I've ever used a camera that's this annoying. At the same time, I don't think I've ever used a camera that has all these awesome features. So. It's a really, really strong mix of annoying things and amazing features, and I really do like this camera, but uh, you do have to find sort of ways around those, uh, those, you know, really, I would sort of say the camera is almost sort of, it does dumb things, you know, there's things that don't make any sense, and, um, and sort of random warning messages that aren't needed and things like that, so have a look at that video uh, if you'd like uh, down below. And uh, okay, next up, a uh, really quick look. I did show this in um, the comparison with the 5D, but uh, so I'm not gonna go, I'm trying not to go over the same two things twice, but just a really quick look at the different things you can see on the screen when you're shooting with this. A very similar thing will apply inside the menu is that uh, you can set the, the things that you need on the screen very, very easily. Here we have a nice histogram at the bottom. It's not RGB. Histogram is a little tool for seeing what your exposure is but it just gives you your um, your brightness value or, or showing you what, what your brightness is like. The um, Again, the uh, camera is very, very nice and easy and simple to use. And um, I haven't had issues with the NEX6 with regards to usability, but the extra sort of the extra buttons and features on the um, on the A7 are really nice. And um, both of these cameras are held more in that sort of shape compared to other DSLRs which are held like that with the button mostly there. So it's, it's a different way of holding that and um, I find it's okay. And it's even more so with the A7. You really have, your, have to have your finger pointed upwards rather than like that. But it works fine and it, it's, it's a very comfortable grip on the camera. And uh, okay, really, really quick look into the menu and then we should be mostly done with the features that I feel are important about this and I'm gonna uh, just cut it short uh, because I don't want to have a really long video and I did go over the menu uh, completely in a separate video where I showed everything about uh, inside the menu of the NEX7 uh, sorry the, the A7 and uh, okay the menus on here let me get to the menu. There it is. So uh, here we have this menu that starts like this and really doesn't make that much sense. You have image size, which is fairly short and fairly, you know, good for what you need. When you want image size options, they are there. And then um, 
here brightness and color that's where you change your picture style and a few other things that don't really make sense like flash compensation but here you have your picture style and your creative style and uh, things like ISO white balance and uh, then you have your big menu your setup menu which has everything else uh, mostly everything else and it's just one big list and it's not super it's fine I get to the things I need but sometimes it is it does mean looking through a longer menu whereas on the a7 it, even though I'm not fully sure exactly where to find something with regards to whether it means camera or set you know whether something would be under camera or settings but it's much much better so I know that here I have connectability here are my apps here's my play menu for everything to do with play uh, playback and then here are my settings for the uh, camera that are less needed um, so things like uh, media info so that's just um, the information about what I've shot formatting the card uh, the USB connection uh, cleaning mode for the sensor um, a few things about you know changing uh, settings that you wouldn't necessarily reach and then you know monitor brightnesses and things like that and volume settings so um, that's there and then we have you know image size and things like that uh, the first and second settings um, tabs so uh, but in between those I still haven't figured out which one does what exactly um, but uh, that's where you find most of your settings uh, again on the NEX6 it's a bit random and I have no idea whether there's any sort of order in here. They did try and um, sort of organize it, uh, not really. And it does mean that sometimes you have to scroll and try and guess where something was. And because it has three menus, it makes it even more difficult because sometimes it would be under camera. I don't know why they gave a small menu for things that are only camera, but um, yeah, there's a small menu here for things that are considered camera as opposed to this one which is considered setup. Um, anyways, and then of course we have uh, playback and application here. Uh, this isn't playback option, this is just playback. Uh, it does give you a few things that you can do here more than just playing the play button, but it isn't uh, changing options about your playback. Um, as far as I remember, let me actually double check that playback. And uh, yeah, so we don't really have many options here we just have things that we can do here. So we can go to protect images and things like that. Um, and uh, yeah. So, um, overall, as a conclusion, I really was happy with my NEX6. I shot some great stuff on it. The improvements on the Sony uh, A7 for both uh, video and stills, uh, which by the way, again, I'll go over the video features in a separate video. But the, the video features and the stills features and the build features and everything like that on the on the A7, for me, were worth the upgrade. And uh, of course, it's not a cheap upgrade, but you do get a, a professional camera here and you do get a professional sort of camera here. Um, you know, like I wouldn't take this as my only camera to a wedding, but I did take it as a backup camera to many weddings and did it did a very good job for me. Uh, whereas this is something that potentially I could consider a main camera, although still, this is still a backup camera to my 5D. So um, I really hope I've gone over everything. It's uh, been a fairly long video, so um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments and check out below for more information about this camera. There's so much more stuff about this camera and I have really tried to make the different videos not say the same thing twice and I really hope I've done that. So um, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.